Hey guys, so we're gonna get started really quick. Um, uh, this is using social media as immersive theater, so if that's a surprise, then feel free to leave the room now. <laughs> um, my name is Paige Borak, and I am a self-professed theater nerd. I, I wear the term proudly. <laughs> um, yeah, I have loved it, and I've studied theater all my life. And so I recently moved to Pittsburgh, and when I did, the first thing I did was join an improv group, because figures, and that is how Albert Chang and I met. So one day during rehearsal, Al was saying, this was before the election, so Al was talking about how uh, absurd it was that we needed to check Donald Trump's Twitter for political news. Uh, he became more right recently, but still. Um, and I have, I have a background in particularly immersive theater. So I, as I am wont to do, was talking about theater. And we started thinking about how, how we could possibly mash the two concepts together. So we started doing our homework. And we learned a bit about theater that was very disheartening for a recent college grad with a theater degree. Um, basically, I had majored in unemployment. Uh, theater is not doing so hot. Live theater. And that's partially because uh, YouTube and because Netflix. And there are so much, there are easier ways to see shows than going to a theater and watching a play. And in 2002, we had roughly 12% of the population had seen a play in the last year. But recently, 2012, only 8% of people, 8%, only 8% of people would see something that I worked on. So more than a little disheartening. Um, and again, part of that is because of cuts in arts education, but a lot of it is also just how much we use digital and social media nowadays. So realizing that theater was not doing so hot, we started looking at social media, which is doing so hot. Um, we're spending more and more time on social media. Uh, in fact, nowadays people spend roughly two hours a day on social media. And I'm guilty of this. Uh, I checked Facebook right before I came up here. And in theater, at least, it's vital to have a Facebook page. Is that two hours a day, is that average across like all ages and demographics? Uh, that's mainly, this country, or? that's 16 to 64. Okay, 16 to 64. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and that's 2016. Oh, so in theater, there's a group called Auditions and Act, and that Facebook group you join as a theater person and it tells you where all of the auditions are in Pittsburgh. So if you wanna know where auditions are, you need to have a Facebook. So we realized a problem though, a hurdle that we would be encountering if we did try this wild concept. And it surprised us, it was attention span. So in 2000, the human attention span was 12 seconds. But in 2015, it was eight seconds. So point of reference, a goldfish's attention span is nine seconds. <laughs> so we officially have a shorter attention span than a goldfish. <laughs> so when you're looking at social media, it makes sense, there are short bursts of content. Uh, have you ever been on social media and you see one of those posts that are like paragraphs and paragraphs long and you click like show more and just scroll down to see if there's a TLDR at the bottom and if there's not, you give up. Like you don't want to make that commitment. And so we started thinking about how we could possibly choreograph those short bursts, how we could choreograph the eight seconds that they might give to us. 
and string them all together and make a story. And so that being said, Al and I created a theater company called Hashtag Immerse. Now, uh, our theater company is geared towards finding new methods of storytelling, new offshoots of theater, basically, ways that we can incorporate the ideology of theater into social media and the internet and other things that, that we are so used to, are so ingrained in our daily life. And personally, I love immersive theater. I love it. I did my thesis on it. Like, I love immersive theater. And immersive theater is just theater where instead of you sitting as an audience member and listening, like you are now, thank you for that, by the way, um, immersive theater is when you as an audience member are a part of the show. And it's really neat, in my opinion. And we realized that social media in it is in and of itself immersive. You end up being at your friend's graduation party, even though you weren't invited, because you can see all the photos. They basically documented it for you. So we decided to use our theater company to start experimenting with different forms we could do this with. So experiment number one, we decided to do a Facebook play. And we called it It's Complicated. Uh, <laughs> so essentially what we mean by a Facebook play is that we gave every character a fictitious Facebook page. So each of them had their Facebook pages uh, and all plot and character information was disseminated to the audience 100% through Facebook. We had the play span five days because we didn't want to, if we had all of our short bursts at once, it would feel like a long burst. So we wanted to make sure that we held people's attention. So over the course of five days, all of the information was given via Facebook. And why Facebook? So there are so many options nowadays. And we chose Facebook because it has the most monthly users per platform. And a majority of its users check it daily. I believe the stat is 70% of people with a Facebook account actually check it every single day. And I'm one of those people. Um, <laughs> so one of the cool things, though, that, that I think is particularly interesting is that Facebook crosses that generational divide. I always imagine, when I think of Facebook, I imagine the 16-year-olds with like the selfies and stuff like that. But 56% of all people above the age of 65 who are on the internet have a Facebook account. This isn't just like teens or millennials. And we found out that the average, the average user of Facebook is roughly 40 years old. And right now, the average age of an audience member at any given performance is 44. This is, this is a, a tool that we have that spans such a large uh, area. We have so many people on Facebook nowadays. And it's also so flexible. If you guys know Instagram, you can only post a photo or a video. If you know Twitter, that's better for statuses. But Facebook, you can do anything on Facebook. The world is your oyster. So the characters. Now, let me tell you a bit about our plot. We, we decided we were learning so much and doing so many new things that we decided that it would be best to go back to a classic one of the most classic stories, Romeo and Juliet. So we adapted Romeo and Juliet to be about two Pittsburgh families, all of whom have Facebook, Facebook accounts. And we decided that instead of having a, 
an absurd family feud, because that really only happens in the 1600s, we would have the Wilsons, our Montagues, be blue collar and our other family to be be wealthy. That way we could still have that schism, but we wouldn't have to have them like people wouldn't have to be hating each other just because of their last name, because that doesn't happen terribly often nowadays. So our Wilsons, our Romeo, Johnny, he, his father, Tony Wilson, owns his own pizza shop. Now we made a page for Wilson's Pizza that uh, actually our actor who played Tony was very good about uh, posting from the Facebook page. He, uh, the Pens won a game or I think the Pens had a game one day and he posted on this fictitious page that like wings would be 50% off if anyone came in wearing a jersey. Like <laughs> he did a great, we, everyone did a great job at really developing their characters. So on Juliet's side, Juliet was Olivia. She has an older brother named Sebastian who kind of worked as our Tybalt, if you're familiar with the story. And her mother is a wealthy lawyer. And then we have Sam. And Sam was our confidant. She was a mashup of a ton of different characters in the actual play. Uh, so she was, she was the nurse. She was Mercutio. She was a lot of different characters. But we wanted to keep it simple. So our story. <laughs> And like I said, all of these people, I'm indebted to all of our actors because they all were able, they used photos from their own life. They got together to make photos to create backstory so that when our audience members became, like started the show, when they became friends, they could scroll through Sam's Facebook page and see all of these photos of her and Johnny hanging out because they're best friends. Obviously that's what would be on her Facebook page. Like it was neat. So the story we opened on July 19th. And like I said, it's a five day long event. So we tried to roughly coordinate the days to the acts of Romeo and Juliet. So day one, Olivia has her 21st birthday party. And Johnny crashes with Sam. And in true Shakespearean logic, there is love at first sight. And Olivia's older brother, Sebastian, is like, nope. And so we have a lot of, can I use my thing? Cool. Um, a lot of the, I ended up having to be Juliet for the record. It was, <sighs> but um, we, things like Sam took a selfie and, uh, and, <laughs> wrote the comment as wing woman mode activated. So these people are in true millennial fashion documenting the events that are happening as the story goes along. So day two, Johnny and Olivia go on their first date and of course document it, take photos everywhere. And so they went around Pittsburgh. So we have photos of Heinz Field. We have photos of the point. We we went around to known Pittsburgh places and made them proud Pittsburghers, basically. And on that night, Olivia becomes fast friends with Sam and uh, they become a really close trio in a very short amount of time. It, just, just to be clear, if I'm understanding huh? right, so Sebastian is Olivia's older brother, yes. right? So he's kind of standing in for kind of the captain. Yeah, he's kind of like the uh, Tybalt, yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. He's like our Tybalt, uh, Tybalt Capulet. Um, so day three is when shit goes down. So <laughs> day three, um, Sebastian, we decided that having Sebat. so in the original play, Tybalt kills Mercutio, and that's like the shit hits the fan moment. But we thought that was a lot. So we had Sebastian burn down the pizza parlor <laughs> that we had been building up. It's Johnny and Tony's, Tony's livelihood. 
that's how they get their bread and butter. So Johnny, obviously displeased with this, uh, beats up Sebastian and it ends up being fatal. So he goes out on the lamb, runs away. And we have the way that we showed the fight, I think is pretty neat. We created a video that is purposefully shaky, purposefully uh, poor quality, because it looks like one of those videos that you'd see on the news that, because people don't stop fights when they see them in the street, they start, they take out their cameras and start videotaping. It looks like, it's, it looks like a cell phone. Yeah. Yeah, and I was going to show it, but I'm not a billion percent sure how. So maybe afterwards, I'll try that. Um, so so, other than that, most of this has been built up with static, Facebook status and, and photo posts. We also have, uh, there have been videos throughout as well. Okay. So a video of, uh, for instance, the club we went to was surprisingly upscale for when we were taking the photos for the first night. And uh, the guy who played Johnny brought tennis shoes, and those were against the dress code of the club. So our actress who played Sam took a video that was like, this guy can't get us into the party because he looks like, a, he looks like trash today, and took like basically a Snapchat of, and posted it online. Now, now, that was intentional, or that was just happenstance? Because happenstance. The club you went to happened online. Yeah. So this, so the story was, in, in some senses, being created 100%. On, on the spot. Yeah. As and you went. I mean, only a certain extent was it planned out. Yeah, and I'll get into that later, but like, it Sorry, became really cool. No, not at all. Um, so day four, uh, our, we had created a f actual fake news, so real fake news, um, <laughs> to give us a, uh, a third party, an outsider, that could report on some of the things that was happening. So aptly named EKAF News uh, started, EKAF News did an interview with Olivia, seeing as her brother had been mauled by a mysterious person. And they, like the media does, took a clip from it that made it sound like Olivia was bashing Johnny and hated him now when that wasn't actually the case. So on this dramatic day, uh, Johnny sends a link or posts a link to that article, EKAF News article, saying, fuck everything. And then we see Johnny's obituary. And then later, hours and hours later, Olivia posts a link to Johnny's obituary and says, and puts in quotes, fuck everything. And then we see her obituary. And Sam is on Facebook freaking out, and so are their parents. And, uh, but things go silent for a while because when that kind of stuff happens in real life, you're, you're not on Facebook. Yeah. In, in the story, the news isn't supposed to be fake news, it's supposed to be real. Yeah. Yeah, okay. mm -hmm. yeah. It's real for their imaginary Pittsburgh. Um, so, day five, most of our cast was killed. So, uh, we had to deal with that. But we decided to have Sam throw a memorial for her two best friends that she has lost. And to give an homage to live theater, we had this be a live event and we broadcast it via Facebook Live. We, it was a lot of uh, eulogies. There was a really cute memorial video, <laughs> in my opinion. Um, and like I said, we broadcast it via Facebook Live. So nearly 10 people tuned in at the time. And you can watch Facebook Live after it's done, too. So we were really excited about that. Um, so this memorial happens, and that's where you see our Montagues and Capulets, our families, reconciling. There's a conflict. 
there's a screaming match, insults are hurled, but then over the course of this 15 minute long memorial, they have a begrudging respect for each other. And and another time we tried to give an homage to Shakespeare because one of the most famous parts of Romeo and Juliet is the prologue, which two households, both alike in dignity, in fair Verona where we lay our scene, blah, 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 blah. And so he starts with this big poem and it's very famous. So we decided to end with a poem that I wrote. So I'm not a billion percent sure how high quality it was. Definitely not Shakespeare's quality, but we decided to take that and put it at the end as a, an extra tribute to Romeo and Juliet. So. Now, was that part of the, the memorial? Yes. And we, so we tried really, really hard to find someone else who'd done this because we wanted a roadmap. We wanted like a precedent and we couldn't find one. So to our knowledge, this is the first play we've found or made. We, this is the first play entirely on Facebook. People have used strategies like this in addition to other things, but this is the only one we could find about. So we had to figure out how to do it on our own, which was hard, and we made an implementation plan, which I'll talk a little about. So. Step one, we prepared. We adapted the story and we figured out how best to tell the story. So like I said, uh, Facebook has so many options, so many tools that we could use. So we would realize that, hey, this, for instance, when Johnny and Olivia get together, we should definitely change one of their relationship statuses on Facebook, which we did. And then later it changed to it's complicated, hence the name. Um, and as we identified that, we created a content generation plan, which was basically everything we needed to do in order to tell our story. So bare bones, what if you just followed this plan, the story would happen. Next, we got our actors. Now, yes, in theory, we could have done this without actors. We could have just gotten our friends to take photos with us and then done it all on our own. But, and uh, do we have any actors in the audience? Yeah, yeah. So you know better than anyone that actors, our job is to embody a character. And so if I were posting for all of those characters, you'd be able to tell because I have a very specific voice. And even if I try to change it, it's still me. So each of our characters developed, each of our actors developed their character's voice. So they decided how many emojis their character would use and how many hashtags. So, and our actors were great, yes. So if I understand correctly, so you did have this, this story, at least in outline of some kind and then you had your content generation plan but then at some point the actor was then allowed to have some say freedom, in creating freedom yeah in, in creating the individual posts yep um so the content generation plan started as al and i giving an example so uh you would see like OMG, in love with this guy, heart, 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 or something silly like that. And once we got our actors, we shared with them that document, and they deleted what we had and created their own piece that got the gist, that meant the same thing. And we went over it and made sure that it told the story how we wanted. But it was important to us that it was their words, because... Actors know the final outcome, or they just know up to that point in time. Oh, we—they knew the final outcome. Yeah, they knew all of it. So, so the final post was they—they they were able to have their creative voice in that post, but then you kind of gave the final stamp of approval before actually posting. Sometimes, um, there were we went off script a few times. Well, to be perfectly honest, yeah. So then. 
So uh, the you have to direct something for five days in real time. Yeah, it was <laughs> it was a little wild. Um, but the actors were incredible in that they all riffed off of each other and worked really well together. Uh, like how I said the fuck everything moment. I thought that was really pretty, and that wasn't. We hadn't had those posts scripted. Like he had said that he was going to say something else. And then in, was like, hey, can I say fuck everything instead? And I was Olivia, so I was like, sure. And then I like was able to mirror it. So we were able to... It was really neat because having actors allowed us to improvise and create a more realistic experience. Because all of them know Facebook, you know? <laughs> They're pretty good at it. Yeah, it's, it was almost like... It was growing with us. We had the base, but it grew with us over the course of even the show. <laughs> Were the audience also posting on the uh, interacting? And were there innocent people that didn't even know that it was a, a performance? Uh, we tried to. So on Facebook, you're able to uh, change who sees the post. So we made all of our characters the posts only visible to people who were friends of the characters and we would only friend audience members. That way uh, people wouldn't be getting, oh my God, my child is dead on their newsfeed without understanding <laughs> what was happening. And uh, it was interesting because a few people who weren't audience members tried to friend these people and we were like, you've never met before like like it wasn't like you've seen them at a party and tried to friend them these people don't exist but whatever uh, you know, audience members were they permitted to post or, or, or comment or were they restricted from here 100 percent allowed to uh we we had hoped and this is a little later but we had hoped that there would be more of that but people were we were excited by how many people were liking their posts and commenting and like on some of the on some of the uh date date day poster like posts they'd be like so cute and things like that so we knew that they were following along in that casual way that facebook lets you do you know so uh in addition this is we uh we started getting all of our content so of course, we weren't actually doing this in real time, uh, photo-wise. We went out and did photo shoots and video shoots around Pittsburgh and prepared it all. Um, so the first scene, actually, is Olivia's birthday, and it's in a club. And I don't ever go to clubs. So uh, I <laughs> told my mother that I was going to a club, and she was like... <gasps> Finally! And I said, for theater. And she was like, of course, okay. Um, so we get all of our content now, we have our plan, and then we set up our event. We used Eventbrite, and uh, we friended everyone who got a ticket. We did a donation model um, who got a ticket for the show. We friended them with all of our characters, and then we sent them a welcome email. Because if this is the first Facebook play, that's happening here. Uh, this is obviously going to be the first Facebook play that these audiences are attending. So we kind of wanted to give them the lay of the land and make sure that they knew what we meant by Facebook play. So our media content plan. Oh yeah. I'm sorry. I was just like, no. what was the third? What was the third step? Oh sure. Uh, so event setup and onboarding. So this was just the logistics of creating a virtual event, basically. So we didn't necessarily, it was a little tricky because we didn't actually have a physical place to send them to. We had links, but... How so, did you send the welcome? Uh, we asked for their email via the Eventbrite page. And so... A few days before the show, we send them a mass email that's like, hey, these people are going to friend you on Facebook. Don't worry. They're not weird strangers. They're characters in the play you signed up for. Um, 
Also, you're going to want to like Wilson's Pizza because they're really funny and also relevant. And EKAF News for ongoing information. And so, uh, was there another hand? Yes. So we spoke with Facebook, and they, Facebook has a policy that you are not supposed to create fictitious accounts. But we talked to lawyers, essentially, because we got nervous at that. And it was considered OK for art as long as we destroy everything afterwards to make sure that we're not like giving false information. And then also, like, uh, we tried to make it as obvious to the outsider that it was fake as possible. Like, most of their bios at the bottom or at the top said, this is a fictitious character for this play. Or um, same thing with the news and the pizza place. So we really tried to make sure that we were abiding by Facebook's rules, kind of. Yeah. So, so technically, you were violating the terms of service for Facebook by creating fictitious characters. Mm -hmm. So, so did you? If you don't, in my answer, they, to, oh, did yeah. you actually get official permission from Facebook to go do that anyway, or did you just and then agree to, to delete everything afterwards? Yeah, we got permission to do it for the days that we said. Now we did leave them up for an extra day just in case anyone had missed any information. So don't tell Facebook. But um Well the worst they could do is delete your pages. But and they've already been deleted, deleted. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we we tried to make sure that we did things as by the book as possible. So this is kind of what our media content plan looked like. Uh, so an example is on the nineteenth, so the very first day we have Olivia posting on Olivia's wall, so a status update, at midnight, saying, thanks to everyone who came to my birthday, great friends, great food, thanks at Wilson's Pizza, and, and I even met a new friend, Winky Face. <laughs> so this was, that wasn't what ended up being said. This is before the actors, me, went in and actually created our characters. But this, is, this was our script. This was our Bible. This is essentially the script. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so this was our script, and it was malleable. So uh, people could adjust it to be who. And honestly, the actors really loved that about it. When we did a postmortem, the, the actors said that it was it was an interesting, it ended up being an interesting character development exercise because they created all that backstory for their character. They created a Facebook page and then slowly they realized like, well, this is how I'd respond to an audience member saying this. Or we also gave our characters free range to deviate from the script as long as it went along with the story. So, uh, for instance, Sebastian actually uh, was actually played by my brother, <laughs> my real brother. Um, and he commented on a photo of uh, Johnny and Olivia saying, are you really hanging out with this guy? He's total scum, basically. And so Johnny sees that and our Johnny replies to the comment saying, okay, big guy, blah, 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 blah. And in the comment section, like on YouTube where you see people arguing in the comment section, like shit got real. Like <laughs> they, were, they were hurling insults like it was nobody's business. And it was perfect because that ended up making it more believable that Sebastian would burn down the pizza place because it's a big jump. That's a big thing to do. But you see how volatile, like, on the comment section was. And it added some sort of, it added that oomph that only an actor could give. They were showing us their characters in a really cool way. But uh, moving on. Oh, 
Oh, well. Uh, so tools that we used. We, uh, like I said, the audience gave us kind of in-show feedback by giving us likes, giving us comments. Uh, <laughs> and again, we used the Facebook Live for our live event for the memorial. So we were able to utilize that new-ish Facebook feature. And making our face our fake news page allowed us to like give obituaries for our characters to link to, basically. Uh, we didn't really assume that the audience would be checking EKAF news. So we made sure that our characters also disseminated the information as well as we could in believable ways. So, uh, <laughs> so our revenue model. Now, this was the first play of its kind, like I said. So we used donations because we didn't know what it was worth. <laughs> so we basically said, give us a donation, any amount will give you a ticket and you'll be able to see this weird thing that we don't even know if it'll work. So we'll be along with you for the ride. And uh, most people went with about $5. One person gave $50 and I am not ashamed to say that was my mom <laughs> um, who actually will be watching this on YouTube. So thanks mom, <laughs> appreciate that. Uh, so that was nice. But um, in general, we gave a survey afterwards to, that the audience members were able to complete and give feedback. And they said that 5 to $10 was a really reasonable price for what they had received going back in hindsight. So, and luckily, a lot of people actually, like, gave $10 or gave $15. So we said, like, suggested donation of 5 but we will take less. We'll take nothing, basically. And nobody gave nothing, and people often gave more, which was cool. And they didn't even know if it was going to be good or not. Um, so we sold 23 tickets. And due to the nature of Facebook, we were able to have we were able to have audience members from anywhere in the world. Anyone who had a Facebook could sit on their couch and tune in, if you will, uh, in their pajamas, for God's sake. Um, so yeah, we. We ended up getting audience members from six different states all around. And this is partially because neither Al nor I are native Pittsburghers. So we were able to tell our friends from wherever the other places we'd lived, hey, check this out, uh, come to my show. And they'd be like, I live all the way over here. And I'd say, that's not an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> so I definitely guilted some people. but. Um, the audience feedback that we received. Uh, one thing that was very interesting to me was that one of my friends co uh, posted on my wall or messaged me or something and said, hey, I'm doing the Facebook play and I want you to know that I'm like, it's like I'm surprised at how much I'm into it. And I was like, well, thanks. I appreciate your low expectation. But we were surprised, too. Uh, people rated it pretty highly. And um, some of the actual stats based on the, the uh, information we received. So a lot of people, a lot of people enjoyed it. Like, so this pie chart is was about the length of the production. And most people thought it, in this graph and in this graph, we asked about how, how much we gave them, the length of the show, how much content we gave them. And in both, they said either that they, it was perfect or that they would have loved it to be more. They would have liked more, which is ideal from a theatrical point of view, because, yeah, we don't want to be bothering them, but we are so willing to give them more. Uh, and this one, we asked them when they lost interest, and this blue is that they never lost interest, which is awesome. And the purple is that they lost interest in the during the live event, which Al and I thought about. 
And it's very reasonable because you know how I said eight seconds attention span earlier? Like we were asking them to be with us for like 15 minutes. That is a lot of eight seconds. Like, so we were pretty understanding if people tuned out when they'd been used to these short bursts and all of a sudden we gave them a longer burst. So things that we learned, oh, this was such a cool educational experience for us. We learned so much. Um, we learned that charging money incentivizes people to actually look through their newsfeed, to actually go to the people's profile pages, to explore and to learn more about the place. Like if someone had paid zero dollars, you could easily forget about it. You could easily just be passive and hope that it shows up. But all of our the people who spoke to us afterwards, either via the survey or informally, said that they looked on, they actively searched for information here. So we got that. We also learned about Hootsuite, which is really cool. You guys might know about it. Uh, it posts automatically to things. So that would have been an awesome thing to have used <laughs> much easier. Um, we, and like I said, replies were used to like add character development, but all of the main plot points needed to be developed via status or posts because you don't get a notification when someone comments on something necessarily. So, uh, what's next for us? So, um, we are doing more experiments, ideally. We're trying to perfect this form and we're trying to find new things because we know that this isn't the only way we can use social media for theater. This, there are tons of other things we can do. And some of our goals are to increase immersion. So in this case, people sometimes like, a lot of people liked things and some people commented on things, but we're working in the future to try to make the audience as as much a part of the production as we can. And we're currently developing that form. Um, we're currently developing a show in that form that will be opening soonish, before the end of the year, hopefully. Um, so we're going to try to work more with engage. That's our next experiment, basically, trying to engage the audience in an immersive way. And from this, we learned what works and what doesn't work. Because like I said, we're, we're exploring the wilderness. We don't know where we're going. We don't have a map. So we're kind of getting, getting a feel for things, figuring out how we can get better. And so if you are interested, if you have any tips or suggestions, neither, so Al, Al is an engineer at Siemens and I do theater. So neither of us are experts at social media. And so if you guys have any tips, any tricks, suggestions, please talk to me afterwards. Or uh, you can also contact me. We have our email is hashtag immerse, hashtag all the way spelled out at gmail.com. We have a website, hashtag immerse.com. And this is my phone number. Feel free to contact me by, at any time. And uh, like I said, if you're interested and you want to learn more, or if you have tips and tricks, or if you just want to talk about life, we'd love to hear from you. And thank you for listening. I think I just saw the next presenter. So thank you very much. Oh, oh, questions. I'll take questions if there are questions. Yeah, that'll be on our website when it goes up. And then we also have a Facebook page figures. But um, I, yes, <laughs> this one is. Did you archive anything so we could go back? Uh, we did a lot of screenshots because we couldn't, we had to delete like the characters pages, but we are compiling and hoping to do a, we're thinking about possibly doing a revival or different, or different shows in the same form. 
kind of, or similar forms. So hopefully, <laughs> but we'll see. Yes. A couple questions. But first, I, of course. I, what, what's fascinating me about this two things is one, you, you call it theater, but it's not exactly theater, but it's also not video or film. It is its own animal that is unique. Yeah. And the other thing too that I find unique is that on one hand you have traditional theater where you have a script and the word in the script is sacred and mm -hmm. as an actor you're not allowed to mess with that generally yeah. speaking. And the other extreme you have, like you mentioned, you do improv where everything is made up beyond just the outline. And this lies yeah. somewhere between <laughs> in a creative process that's collaborative. Yeah. Really fascinating and unique um, in, in the way that the actor is allowed to contribute to the process in a way that is not traditional. Um, and then and I have two, two questions. One, in, in terms of, you said five to ten dollars, you feel like is probably the sweet spot, at least for now. Mm -hmm. um, based on the time you spent in developing this and investing in this, is this a model, <laughs> or do you foresee a model where, where this, compared to a traditional, say, theater model or a film model, where your time versus your income is actually going to create something that is viable? And then the second question is, in terms of your audience, I imagine a lot of what people you know, mm -hmm. in terms of people you may not have known, and the degree that they interacted, is there guidelines for the audience in terms of, and you don't want somebody stepping and say, oh, this is just fake and stupid or whatever. You don't mm -hmm. want to comment like that because then it takes you out of the experience. Yeah. So were there guidelines for the audience and how they should appropriately interact? Uh, we said that any, any, in, any interaction that they deemed appropriate, that they imagined was appropriate would probably be okay. But in addition, we, Al and I had access to every Facebook account. And so did the, in addition to the actors having access to those Facebook accounts. You know, Rush, I think our other speaker's running late. It might have been parking like five minutes ago. Oh, sweet. Okay, so, um, so we were, I just lost my train of thought. Oh, so we were, constantly, that was probably the most I've ever been on Facebook, but constantly reviewing everything to, and no one was mean about it, you know? Like, no one, we didn't have any trolls, which was cool, sure. but we we made it so that it would be easy to detect and delete if it wasn't appropriate for the show. And in terms of kind of the model for this, mm -hmm. in terms of well, well, the good thing is that um, this is, very low overhead because we don't need to rent a space. We don't need to, uh, we don't need to have like these formal rehearsals. So we didn't need to rent rehearsal space because they, there was no blocking. <laughs> and uh, I mean, there was, I guess, in a sense, but no formal blocking. So it has a low overhead, which is really nice. And we, like, like you said, we made a lot of the people who showed up, we did only word of mouth advertising because this is kind of like our beta test. So we kept it small, but, uh, oh, God, gosh darn it, what was I saying? Oh, uh, we still, at the end of the day, made enough money to pay all of our actors and still almost not lose money, <laughs> which is cool for theater. I mean, that's awesome because you'd be shocked at how difficult it is to n not be in debt when you do theater. And we almost broke even on our first try, which is partially due to the fact that my mother donated $50, <laughs> but I'll take it, you know? <laughs> like, well, well, you don't have an audience developed already, which yeah. you have that, but Obviously. Yeah, hopefully. And you also had to develop the script. Mm -hmm. the script. Yeah. For the very first time, which again, once you have a script already developed, and that's. Yeah, this one, uh, this actually is the product of a year of work. And after it, <laughs> that's a lie, during it. So uh, I think on day three, I texted Al and I was like, so when are we doing it again? And uh, so we're already developing our, our next show, and it's going to take significantly less time now that we kind of know what we're doing. Yes? Thank you. In the end, of do you own the content posted since it's on Facebook? Do you own? 
uh, Facebook. So the content we generate is just as public as anything you or I would post on Facebook, which means that Facebook owns it to an extent. So you, you created a store that store and they owned your intellectual property? So, I mean, you couldn't create a website that explained the concept using that as, like, as an example. That, that, that'd go along without explaining to what you're... Yeah. You could somehow show some sort of example. Yeah, definitely. And we're looking to experiment both with social media, but that's another reason why we go with donation models because we don't want to we don't want to mess with that whole pay for this we're demanding you pay for this but it's not 100% ours so we're just like hey if you want to donate this can be a present for you <laughs> yes he would yeah, definitely get a cut yeah and i was like at this point facebook really doesn't care about us but who knows yeah. I had two sort of related. One, did all of the uh, audience buy the tickets before the beginning action started, or did some come in later? We had a deadline of the first day. At a certain point, at the towards the end of the first day, you could still get a ticket. So July nineteenth, and that was because if we went any later, you would have to go through backstory. And that's just a lot of effort that we can't guarantee you'll do. So you'll just see, oh, someone died. Okay, yeah. guess that's what's happening now. Um, so yeah, we and that way we were also able to make sure that we could friend everyone all at once. And, and the people that got it, oh yeah, tickets, thank you. I'm not sure earlier were they able to see the backs story that you already established, or did you just show up one day? Oh no, we established a ton of backstory and we friended everyone a few days before, everyone who had already signed up were friended by July 17th. So they could see everything up there. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. Nothing new happened until the 19th. Well, uh, <laughs> our Sam really loved, she decided that Sam was a selfie taker and so every day, even before the show started, she'd be posting selfies. And Johnny made a snarky status or two because we told them when the audience could see them. And they had fun with it. <laughs> yes? Uh, we hope to. I mean, we're looking at we're looking at different forms of advertising, but we're also wary because we're still pretty new at this. So we're hoping that we continue to get better, continue to uh, develop this new kind of storytelling that doesn't have a name yet. And once we know that we have something solid, we'll start deviating from word of mouth. But word of mouth has actually been really helpful. Like, a lot of the audience members have been telling their friends about us, which is cool. But uh, are there any other questions? Okay, brilliant. Thank you so much for letting me talk and for listening to me. Um, I appreciate it. If you, like I said, if you have anything you want to say or you want to get involved or anything, feel free to talk to me or contact us or any of the above. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>